Hey guys, Gregor from Pesodas here, and I'm very excited to introduce you to the brand new Studio One profile for the Loop Deck CT today. The Loop Deck CT is a remarkable little controller that makes your workflow life in Studio One and a whole lot of other applications a lot easier. It features three rotary encoders on each of the sides that are also push encoders for an additional function. It also has eight soft buttons that you can use to step through different workflow pages. And then there's also some buttons that can behave like usual keyboard keys and their function can be freely assigned and also double assigned thanks to the function key here. By holding that down and pressing a key, it can trigger a secondary function. The same is true for these soft buttons here, by the way, so you can really assign this to your house content. One of my favorite features actually are these touchscreen buttons in the center, which are not only super sensitive, but you can also swipe them left and right to flip between pages so you get even more assignments out of this little compact controller. All of these assignments can be made through the powerful Loop Deck software that's available as a free download from the Loop Deck website. And inside of this software, it's super easy to just select any of the hardware buttons that you have on the unit. Like it could be the touchscreen buttons that I mentioned, the rotary encoders, the soft buttons here. And with just a couple of clicks, you can assign keyboard shortcuts. You can assign sequences of keyboard shortcuts as macros. You can even assign MIDI CC and note data, mouse button behaviors can be simulated and a whole lot of other things which really make this a truly flexible controller for any app. But the main reason that I'm showing you the Loop Deck CT today is obviously, as I said in the intro, the brand new Studio One profile that's just been launched on the Loop Deck website. So let's take a look. After you've downloaded the profile and launched the Loop Deck config software that you can also download for free from the Loop Deck website, you should see this interface here. And to import the profile, you simply click here where it says profile and then you click on import profile. Now you just navigate to your downloads folder or wherever you save that Studio One profile to that you just downloaded and hit import. And once you've done so, you can just select the application for which you want to use the Studio One profile. In this case, it's obviously got to be Studio One. Hit OK and you're good to go. All right, so let me give you a quick overview of the basic functions of this Studio One profile. Of course, you can completely customize that to your liking. The Loop Deck Studio One profile comes with eight so-called workspace pages. You can navigate them by pressing these soft buttons here, one to eight. The first one is actually the home workspace that is like an overview of all the other ones. So in fact, you have seven workspaces available here. Each workspace is sort of dedicated to a specific topic in Studio One. This is the file workspace that's dedicated to, you know, many of the things that you find in the file menu in Studio One, like importing, exporting, saving and opening projects, things you need all the time, really. And there's also more workflow oriented pages. I especially enjoy workspace number four, for instance, and then the page number two on that one. Like I mentioned, you can swipe over the touch screen here here to access multiple pages of commands and especially page number two here on workspace four I find very useful because it just comes with functions that you need all the time like arming tracks, monitor enable, mute and solo, retrospective record, a feature that came in Studio One 5 that I love. And I also find that a lot of these functions are a perfect match for personas controllers which I'm going to show you in just a moment. When you navigate through the workspace pages here you notice that the rotary encoder functions on the side are always staying the same and that's very useful because that means you can just blindly touch them and they will always do the expected behavior. The top left one is always assigned to a horizontal zoom, the one underneath is for a vertical zoom and the third one here has a behavior that's extremely cool, you might know it from the fader port already, that controls track volume for the currently selected channel. The two rotary encoders on the top right here are dedicated to nudging node events and parts across the timeline, also very useful. And then you have a preset navigation next and previous, something that I use all the time. Now, as I just mentioned, the Loop Deck also offers some great synergies with Personas controllers, such as the Atom.
In this example here, you can see how I'm using the Atom to play the Impact XT, a drum sampler in Studio One, while I use the loop deck to create a new pattern, open up the instrument editor, and handle navigational functions such as record and playback. It's super fun, a great synergy there. You should definitely check it out.